views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of the station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Get ready to challenge conventional beliefs about what's possible in creating health, wealth, and happiness. You are listening to Playing on the Edge Radio with Megan Edge. This hit show is providing you with ways of sustaining radical and powerful changes in your life. It is time to open and expand your awareness, accelerate your well-being as Megan shares wisdom, teachings, and experience from a lifelong journey of the heart. Enact the power of radical change with ease and lift your desires to a new perspective. Now, here's Playing on the Edge Radio. I think we're going to keep it really simple. I'm Dr. Pat, and I am here with Megan Edge. We are talking about on the edge of simplicity. And what do you think about that, Megan? <laughs> As we discovered, Pat, when we were doing our research and our, our, um, our chats about this before we started the show, holy cow, not as simple as we thought it was going to be. It wow. turns out that simplicity is quite complex when you start to really examine it. Yeah, as we discovered. Yeah. And I don't know about you, but the last couple of weeks as we've been talking about this, I've really been very conscious of how simplicity shows up in my life. And if I'm really living the simple life that I'm desiring to live, am I getting caught up in in drama that creates complexity? And even just really wondering about life itself, the creation of life, and is that a simple or complicated process? It's It's really taken up an enormous amount of my my thinking and my mind, which leads yeah. me to believe that this is a more complex subject than we may have thought when we started the started doing this. Yeah, you know, I, there's that expression, keep it simple, sweetheart, mm -hmm. or what you write, keep it simple. And I think when you say that, right, and we're going to talk about this today as we get into it, you know, as we say that, right, what I'm struck by is what's simple, and you and I discover this, what's simple for me Mm -hmm. may not be simple for you. That's right. And, you know, you made a, a, you had an awareness before we started. This is our 20th show together, right? You pointed that out to me. Yes, I know. How exciting is that? I, I can't believe it. And the reason I say that is there's this idea of time standing still. Mm. Now that's a very complex a uh, quantum idea. Yes. But there's a simplicity to it that when we are so emerged in something we truly love, doesn't the, yeah. the nature of that, doesn't it really break it down to the simple fact that we are able to control our perception of time? And so if that's true, and then the other is true, that here we are in our fast paced world. This is what I'm going to ask you about too. Mm -hmm. and we real, do we really want a simpler life? Yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting when, we, when I've been thinking about over this last week that this is our 20th show. And it was in fact, two years ago this month that I received an email from Jessica saying, hey, we think you're kind of neat and sort of interesting. And would you like to consider being on radio? And, and one of the things I had to do was think about what that was going to add to my life just in terms of my, my schedule, my commitments, was it going to complicate things more? Was it going to be a simple process? And, it, and in the end, the yes was the simple part, but certainly the participation in it created a different level of, of engagement and commitment in, in my month. And so it did add that layer of complexity. And as you say though, my experience of what is simple for me and what's complicated is going to be different from somebody else's. I do one show a month. You do how many shows a month? <laughs> uh, I do about 12 hours a week. Yes. Something like that. I, yes. I don't know. So for you to simplify your work, for example, or the number of hours that you put into your work is going to be a different process than me simplifying 
the amount of time that I put into the radio show, right? It's, it's quite a different level of that kind of simplicity versus com- complexity mm-hmm. and what Which, we end up doing with it. Well, let's talk about this because there was something that drew you to this topic, mm-hmm. right? Yes. Talk a little bit about that because I don't even remember when that was because we've talked so much about it, right? That I actually <laughs> forgot that. But I think both of our perspectives have changed, you know, the closer yeah. we look at this. Absolutely. You know, when I, when I first thought of the subject as, as something that we could have fun talking about, it was really about honing in on the idea of what is the simple life and why is it something that some of us strive for? Well, at the same time, it seems that life is just getting more and more complex, more intertwined. We see so much more in a day. We know so much more in a day. How do we reconcile the the desire for simplicity that seems to be a very core human desire for many people with the reality of what's going on around us? And so I, when we first started this topic, I wanted us to look at what is simple is simple something that we really want? And how can we achieve that? How can we bring simple into it? And even in our first conversation, one of the things that came up that that, that added that level of complexity is this, this understanding that simple equals easy. Easy isn't something that our culture necessarily values. Yeah, and, the, and my point of view about this, and this is where we, we really, what we're doing, for me, simple doesn't always mean easy. Mm-hmm. And I think about that because you and I spend hours talking about this, right? Yeah. Um, and, and so I had to ask myself, where the heck did you get that from? Why do you think, Pat, that simple doesn't mean easy? Why do you think that, Pat? Right. Because so... It, this is one of these shows, everybody out there, we'd love to hear from you, right? What is your view of simple? Is simple easy or is it something else? 1-800-930-2819. Yeah. And what do you think when somebody says, keep it simple? What do you, what happens to you? It's like, does the hair on the back of your neck just like, like turn into like porcupine things right there? <laughs> but because we are being told Simplify, simplify, declutter. Oh, oh! Did you actually say that word? I said the word. I said it. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Linda's coming to visit again. (laughs) Oh, is she a declutterer? (laughs) Triple Virgo, seriously? Okay. Right. Okay. Um, So here's something really interesting that happened around decluttering. If I can jump in for a second. Jump in. I'm jumping in. Okay. So I I consider myself to to live a very simple life. At least I try to to bring simplicity and I I don't engage in other people's dramas if I can help it. There's enough of that when I work with my clients and I'm helping them unravel their dramas so that we can get to the source of the healing that we need to do. Because in those dramas, there's usually a lot of wounding. There's a lot of triggering that's going on. And I want to help them see the the bigger picture by, by taking things apart and looking at the smaller picture. So in my house, when I look around my home, I feel like it's not very cluttered. But as we were talking about, this is such a personal perspective. Once a month we, or once a year, we leave our home and our landlords come and they stay in our home. We do like a home exchange with them. They're Swiss, Swiss German. They come into the home and they start packing things up to, to create more space. And, and I, they were doing it, they said, because they've got little children and they didn't want things to get wrecked. And I totally appreciate that and understand that. What I noticed when I walked into the house was how plain it felt and how uncluttered it felt, even though I hadn't considered that my decor was cluttered. But I feel like for them, it was cluttered and their concern around their kids breaking things just because there was so many things around. They, they packed everything up and put it away for us. And I'm now unpacking all of that and recluttering <laughs> in a sense my own home to bring it back to the state of simplicity that I appreciate. (laughs) See how complicated that is? (laughs) I like my brain is trying to process what you just (laughs) said. You know, it's kind of, it's kind of like, okay. It's kind of like, uh, I go through this periodic of cleaning things out. Right. 
-hmm. and I pay things forward. But then I go to a rummage sale or something, <laughs> right? Yep. Um, but maybe, maybe she her space wants to be filled. I, that's what I feel. If you look at nature, unless you're in a desert where it's pretty simple, that's about as simple as you're going to get in nature. Anywhere else on the planet, na nature fills space. Space wants to be filled. So if we try to empty our minds and move into meditation, move into simple thinking, I feel like it's almost a human condition that thoughts are going to start to try to fill that space and clutter up our thinking and our clarity of mindfulness, which is why keeping it simple is actually one of the most difficult things that you can do. One of the most challenging things that you can do. Right. Yeah. 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 And you know, look, we can apply this and we're going to talk about the range of this today on the show. Uh, there's a wide range. And I think we should go ahead and skip the break for the moment because we do want to talk about this. And, and there's a continuity to what you're saying. I want to make sure we honor that. And the continuity is when we think about this, we also reference, Megan, a simpler life. Mm -hmm. how, how often have you heard people say, I really need to simplify my life. I really yeah. need to. Do they mean that? I wonder. I really wonder. And since we started looking at this subject, yeah. I'm really beginning to question how natural that is, how natural the simple life is. And yet we do yearn for it, it seems. We, especially when things get overwhelming, there's a yearning for, wouldn't it be wonderful if you just woke up in the morning, got your breakfast, read the newspaper, I don't know, puttered in the garden, said hi to your neighbors, had lunch, puttered in the garden. This is, this is my simple life, right? Um, make a lovely dinner, chat with friends, go to bed. Simple. That would be my ideal simple day. No demands on my time. Nobody needing me for anything really just creating a bubble of serenity around me by doing the things that I enjoy doing. I know I've got clients who, when we, when I suggest to them, let's simplify, they go into a complete panic because they, they don't know what to do in that space that would open up if they weren't completely cluttered with things around them or drama around them or other people around them or demands on them. It's a very uncomfortable place for them to be because I think that what happens is that without all that clutter in our minds and in our homes and, and around us, space opens up for us to get to know ourselves. And I think a lot of people are afraid to know who they are. And so the busyness of our lives becomes that, that distraction, that coping mechanism for, the, for the, the knowing that actually part of what we're doing here is learning who we are. And that's not something we're comfortable doing. So we unsimplify. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I've tried to make things pretty simple in what I, I, I've tried to keep things simple. And, you know, look, this organization, I'm surrounded by genius people, right? And then I get to work with somebody like you, super creative, mm -hmm. right? And I've tried multiple ways to try to explain things that I look for or mm -hmm. that things, you know, what the vision is. But sometimes that's not easy. And so, you know, we are complex human beings at many, many levels. Mm -hmm. But we are very, very uh, shy about communicating to be heard and understood and hear and understand. Right. But simple seems like such a simple word. <laughs> and yet, are we driven by an environment yeah. that doesn't allow that for us? I think so. I think you're absolutely right. And we talk about simpler times. We have this idea in our minds that because we experience our lives these days as, as being so full and complicated and busy and so much going on, that there must be simpler times. There must have been a simpler time when we didn't have all those responsibilities like childhood. And, and we can fantasize about the idyllic childhood. Not all of us had it to be sure, but where there was no expectation, no responsibility. We got to just be kids. We got to play all day long. And 
when we become adults and we enter the adult world and all of the social interactions and the complexities and nuances of those interactions, there is this yearning that, that shows up for us. I think I could say for everybody at some point in time, there becomes this yearning for that KISS principle, that keep it simple, that simpler life, even though for some people that might be really uncomfortable for them. Yeah. Um, you know, look, what we're talking about, and this is a big show about this, right? Mm -hmm. You know, this is where we're looking at not just one aspect of what we think simplicity is, but we're also looking at various other aspects of how to implement this, mm -hmm. right? You know, how often do you hear, I need to streamlines. Here's the question. Let's talk about this. Mm -hmm. Is streamlining the same thing as simplifying it? And when we say simple life, what comes to mind for you? For me? Yeah. What, is that, I, what does that look like? <laughs> it looks like the last five weeks I spent at my cottage on Main Island, one of the Gulf Islands here in BC. It's, it's that idea for me of being in a place I love with my day being my own, again, without demand or expectation from other people. I mean, my daughters were there with me and we had this beautiful time, the three of us together. And then my husband would come on the weekends. It was very 1950s summertime holidays, actually. Um, and it was great because we just had the day to ourselves to go to the beach or go for a hike or just sit around on the deck and watch the ferry boats go by. That's about as simple as it could be for me. And if I had no financial constraints or worries in the, in the world, that's where, at least for the time being, I would live a simple life. That would be my ideal simple life. What about you? What uh, your uh, I thought about that. And, uh, you know, I, I think that um, one of the things that I think about is my life now. Mm -hmm. So when people look at, okay, so here, here's the thing. Let's talk about this. When people see my life, especially people that are close to me, there's only one word they give me for it, and that is busy. Mm -hmm. That's what people say. Yes. Right? That, 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 that's it. Busy. Yeah. Right? They don't ask me if I'm having a great time or if I see my life busy. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. I don't see my life busy. I just don't see it the way other people. Um, I mean, if I'm that busy then how is it I can take time in an afternoon and go play table tennis? And so there's a perception, right? Yeah, that's the personal uh, perspective of it all. That's right. Yeah. And so, but how simple is simple then? You know, and does simple mean that I'm not busy? Mm -hmm. Is and that it, a way to look at it? Well, and I think that brings it back to the, to the point of conversation where do we actually value easy or ease or do we have some judgments around that in terms of easy equal lazy simple equaling not intelligent right we use we use the word simple in derogatory ways as much as we might use it as an exalted way of living as an insult if somebody is simple minded it means that they don't they can't grasp the complexities at whatever level that is right so that perspective becomes really important. People look at my life and say the same thing as they do about yours. Oh my God, you're so busy. I don't know how you do it. Well, they're right. And actually part of why I spent the last five weeks at the cottage is because I had hit an exhaustion point where I, I actually couldn't function in the way that I had been before. I couldn't interact with people. I, I just simply couldn't. My body said, enough already. You're done. You need to rest. You need to make it, you need to keep it simple. So before that experience, simplicity had been a concept that I thought I was engaged in. And then I was forced through my body's need for rest to see, oh, I actually wasn't keeping it simple. I was just adding more and more layers of busy because of a sense of, from my upbringing of busy equals um, functional or busy equals valuable. Busy demonstrates that you're, you're giving something back, you're creating something that is of value. So I, I had a judgment around all that, that I didn't even realize I was carrying. So yeah. this whole, this whole experience over the last five weeks, and then doing this work with you over the last couple of weeks, as we've been talking about this, it's really brought 
the reality of the complexity of simplicity to the forefront. And now that I'm back in the city, I'm driving around and it just feels like it's just too much. It's too busy. There's too many things going on. And knowing that I, that I will be back here in September full time and engaged back in my business and my work, I'm really looking at how can I bring in the philosophy of simplicity that I've been teaching others, how can I bring that into my own experience so that I'm walking the talk and not just talking the talk? So is simple, for example, like uh, going to the cottage or going on an extended vacation or, I, I mean, oh my God, look, I'm, I'm getting into the same dialogue that you and I have just spent like weeks talking about. <laughs> Um, let's talk about the end game because yeah. there's a reason for this. There's yeah. a reason you and I are talking about it. Yeah. And let, let's, let's talk about that for a minute before we go to break. So I believe hundred mm -hmm. percent that we can simplify our lives and that there is an incredible value in simplicity and that it is a real challenge to understand what that is and to live that life. And I'll, I'll share a story. It's almost a parable, really. Many years ago, I was sitting on the deck at the cottage and I was doing nothing. I was really uncomfortable. I'm looking around and I'm enjoying the beauty and the birds and the eagles and the whales going through. And it's, it's gorgeous up there. And I'm thinking, my thinking mind is saying, there must be something you could do. You should mow the lawn or, or trim a tree or clean the cottage. You should be doing something. I was really having a challenging time sitting and simply doing nothing. And then I heard this voice and the voice said, the act of doing nothing is really quite something. <laughs> and I was floored. Oh, oh, you're right. I am doing something in the nothing that I'm doing. Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, have you ever had, has anybody ever said to you, let, let, let's, let, let's just talk about this for a second before we go to break. Has anyone ever said, look, like you're planning an event, like mm -hmm. with your friends or something, mm -hmm. maybe, right? You're getting ready to plan an event. And there are some people, right, when they plan a thing, right? And even in the workplace. So when they plan a thing, there are some people that'll come out and say, hello, uh, you know what? Here's what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to paint me a picture and it's going to be all red. There are other people that will come out and say, gee, I know I want a painting. I'm not sure if it should be red. It could be red, but maybe it should be not red. And how about if we add a splash of yellow to it? Mm -hmm. And then maybe with this flash of yellow, you got to be careful, though, what wall, the color of the wall. OK. <laughs> Neither <laughs> one of those is wrong or no. right. But I start cringing at the more complicated one, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> and, and part of me, what, what I'm hearing in my mind is, well, this is where intuition kicks in. Right. You, the intuitive answer is going to be the simplest answer in my experience. It's not always going to be the easiest answer to follow. But if the answer is red, then let it be red. Not allowing yourself to get caught up in, but the what ifs and it could be and it, you know, what have. No, just take a breath. It's red. We're good. We don't need to overthink it. We don't need to overcomplicate it. And as I'm saying this, something that's popping into my mind right now is I wonder if the need that we seem to have for complexity where did it go now? The need that we have for complexity is actually a defense mechanism against simplicity. What? <laughs> <laughs> let's take a short break. Let's, let's. <laughs> this is so not simple, is it? <laughs> you know what it's like? It's like my grandmama. That mm -hmm. taught me how to make meat, meatballs, my grandma. <laughs> mm -hmm. And in, in Italian, by the way, this is this is her in Italian. I'm going to say it in English. Mm -hmm. This is grandma. And it, it tells me. Right. 
I'm going to teach you how to make a meatballs, a meatballs. We're going to make meatballs. So easy, so easy, so simple, so easy, so simple. <laughs> when we come back. <laughs> so easy and so simple. It took my grandmother an hour to describe to me the exact technique Everything from the right cheese, the locatelli, you don't ever make meatballs without locatelli, to the exact amount of the pork, the beef, that, how you have to fry them, how long they have to cook in the sauce, what the herbs are that go in them. But more importantly, the most critical part of this, when we come back, we'll be right back. It's so simple. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back. Yeah, we are here with Megan Edge and we're playing on the edge, just playing on the edge radio. And I love doing the show with the most incredible Megan Edge. Today we're talking about what does it mean to be on the edge of simplicity? So before we get to it now, mm -hmm. and we talk about simple equals easy dash, why don't we value easy before we get to that? Because that's like a biggie. Yeah. Um, look, a lot of information. You have classes coming up. Please tell folks about all of it, if you don't mind. I would love to. It's, I don't know how simple it is, <laughs> but I'm trying well, to keep it simple. <laughs> well, I look, your class has eight steps. That's pretty simple. That is pretty simple. <laughs> yes, that, that's one of the online classes that's coming up in September. This is the eight steps to becoming a master manifester. This is a manifesting program that I've created, a system that I've created over the last 10 years that I've been doing this work that I've taken so many people through. And we brought it online last spring and the classes have been filling ever since. And it's, it's just such a fun opportunity for me to take people through these steps. They're not always the easiest steps. I will be perfectly honest with you. You are invited to go deep into your core limiting beliefs. You're invited to understand where your idea of what you deserve in life is coming from. And the, and the intention is that as we go through these eight steps, these eight weeks and work with each step each week, we start to pull it apart to really actually get down to the core of what's in the way of the individual having the life that they actually want and feeling like they deserve it. So it's a really powerful, very transformative program. And that's coming up in September. You can go to the website at meganedge.ca and get registered online for that. We have upcoming intuitive energy massage certification courses starting again in September, level one and level two. And then my premier course, the healers program, the confident healer an intuitive, an intuitive, an intensive intuitive healers certification program that's not an easy thing to say that's a mouthful. wait a minute is there an acronym somewhere in there okay so this is a version of simple i worked for a, the phone company who had an acronym for everything so what's mm -hmm. the acronym for that course an into an intensive intuitive healers certification program i i cp cp ip no it's i don't think there is one oh my gosh. <laughs> we just call it ch Actually, I like it. CH is good. Calls it CH, Confident Healer. It's it's a Confident, it's a confident healer. healer. Yeah. And that's a 10 month program that starts in September as well. That's that's personal. That's a personal live workshop once a month yeah. in person. Yeah. So it's it is somewhat limited to your geography. Mm -hmm. You would most likely need to be in Victoria or the Victoria area in order to easily come in for the workshops. Everything else is done online though with that program. Yeah. And then what I'm really excited about is that we're taking the content from the Confident Healer and we're creating online, just not just personal development programs. So we're doing one on past lives and past life regression and healing in the present life using past life therapies. Think Brian Weiss, if you're not familiar with it. Yeah, yeah. We're doing another one on the chakras, the chakra journey. I love working with the chakras. It's, it's a very integral part of the energy work that I do. I'm also going to be offering an intuitive development online program. So these are all the things that have been churning around in my mind for the last year. And as of this fall, we're going to start implementing them and making them available to people from all over the world to come and do this work with us. Oh, oh, that's what's simple. <laughs> yes. Churning butter. Churning butter. Churning butter. 
is about as simple as you could get, but it's also really hard. Okay, so <laughs> look, <clears throat> let's get to this. Simple equals easy, right? Yeah. But we don't value it. So if we don't value it, we, we just ain't going to do it. Yeah. Right? And that's what? about as simple as you can get, I think. Yeah. Why, why don't we value this? And that's not an easy question. The why question. Why mm -hmm. is never an easy question. Mm -hmm. Well, we were looking at the, that Protestant work ethic that we have in North America. Bless the Protestants for bringing us that one. Where, hard, and I don't mean that in, to be disparaging to anybody who's Protestant. That's my background as well. Um, the idea that you must work hard in life to achieve the things that you achieve. And if you do not work hard and you achieve that goal, if you did it the easy route, if you took the easy way, then there's not as much value to the outcome. If you win a million dollars versus you worked your butt off and made a million dollars, in all honesty, and I'd love to hear what our viewers and listeners have to say about this, in all honesty, which of those goals, winning a million dollars or working your butt off for a million dollars, would you value more? The end result is the same. You have a million dollars. But in the first scenario, somebody gives you a million dollars. All you had to do was go buy a lottery ticket. Or maybe your aunt died and left you a million dollars. You didn't do anything for that. You just were there and the money showed up. That's an easy way to get a million dollars. On the other hand, you worked your butt off for 10 years, 15 years. You built a business and finally you reach that year where you make a million dollars. Which do you value more? Are, are, you, are you serious? Yeah. Which do you want? Which do you honor more? Which do you value more? Listen, if somebody gave me a million dollars right now, I would probably invest it in the business that I'm, to, <laughs> that I'm trying to make the million. But no, I, I, I don't know. Uh, so here, here, let me give you a snapshot where I think we are in our society right now. I don't think we've always been here. I just don't think we've always been here. Mm -hmm. But I think this is where we are now. Look. We have gone through a very difficult time that nobody really wants to talk about, except me. Okay, like I'm a downer. Uh, <laughs> but here, here's what I want to talk about. We went through 2008, right? You remember? Mm -hmm. 2009, right? 2006. So we went through those years, which were horrific for a lot of people. Yeah. A lot of people. And now we're on the other end of it. And so we're on the other end of it. And you cannot go through that kind of economic situation where it doesn't influence multiple generations of a family to insert in them a new philosophy about work. Mm -hmm. And there is a new philosophy about work. The repeal of the psychological contract on work is gone. How do I know? I studied it for 10 years. It's gone. Yeah, there might be a new one, but we don't know what the rules of the game are. And so do you think it becomes simpler, Megan, when we know the rules of the game? So this is a great example, right? And this is what you're talking about is really beautiful because once upon a time, it was true. Mm -hmm. You work hard. At the end of that work, you, you're going to get like a pension and, and then you're going to get the pension and not only are you going to get the pension, but you're going to get the pension with the Medicare and the social security. I, I don't know all of those things. Once upon a time, you worked hard, you gave the company your best, you worked your way up and you retired to a simpler life. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. To a few different ideas swirling around. Most of the people that I've met who are retired are busier than they've ever been before. Now they're usually busier doing the things they really want to be doing, <laughs> but right. They're really, really busy, but they're enjoying themselves. I think of my father who retired and he gets to fish and he gets to garden and he gets to be on all various organizations and clubs and associations. He gets to feel like he's making a difference in the world. And I'm sure that he is. And it's quite different than slogging it out for the company. I like that word slog. Slog. It's a good word, isn't it? It's a good word. 
<laughs> See, I'm telling you, multiple generation, multi generational yeah. impact of this. Yeah. Right. Well, then, then, so here's the other piece that comes in, though, when we start talking about this. Yeah. The religious side of it, where you, you made a comment about it's simpler when we know what, what to do. It's simpler when we know what's expected of us. So if, in business, if you're expected to climb the ladder and, and pat the backs and do all that stuff, you know exactly what your trajectory is. You don't really have to think about it. And similarly, in some cases with religion, you're given your life path. You're told how to behave and how to respond and how to react and how to be. And you don't have to think about it. In fact, you're often encouraged not to, to be very blunt. And for a lot of people, that's a really comfortable place to be because everything is laid out for them. It's very simple. It's right there in front of them. They don't have to challenge it. They don't have to question it. They don't have to think about it. It's all right there. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that being the way in which you choose to live your life. It doesn't work for me personally, because my brain is in a constant swirl of, but what if, and could we, and is there a different way? And constantly questioning the world around me. Um, and there are times when I have wondered, would, would my life actually be simpler if I just followed the rules and expectations and didn't question them? Look, let's, keep, let's use a real time example, because you're right about that. Mm -hmm. are, are you a rule follower? No. You, okay, I just I was just, I didn't know, I didn't know exactly where you were going to go. And if no. I, was, I didn't know if I was going to have to call you out on that. Right there, <laughs> well, but, okay, I'm not an anarchist. I appreciate when there are rules in place. Things okay. like you get to a stop sign and you wait and you make sure it's safe to go and then you go. You don't all just try to get, go to the intersection at the same time. That there's there's rules of engagement that help our culture, that help our society and our communities move smoothly because we are all in agreement that these are the things that we're going to follow. Those okay. are the rules I'm okay with. All right. When someone tells me this is that there's only one way to do something. I will immediately start looking for five other ways to do it. <laughs> Somebody asked me not too long ago, why and why, and this is exactly their words, why in God's name would anybody study the consequences of broken promises for 10 years? And hmm. then they followed up before I could answer it because I, I had an answer, but honest, I didn't even want to go there. But then they followed it up and they said, was there a promise that was broken to you that really caused you angst. Now, mm. where, where am I going with this? Because I think that we're talking about simplicity and trust. Because would I simplify my life if I trusted? And, and you, you can look, trusted in a higher energy, a higher source to do the heavy lifting for me. Would mm. I simplify it? Would I get off the hamster wheel knowing that I've done my part, you do yours? Would I do that? And so we look at that. But, you know, here's the answer to that. I remember having an absolute hissy fit in uh, St. Benedict's Catholic Church confessional. I remember this. I can't remember the year because I don't remember when they did this. But I went like I said, what do you mean? I can eat meat on Friday now. What do you mean I don't have to wear a hat in church, right? Right. And, and the, I remember the priest saying to me at one point, you know, this is when I was practicing Catholic. The free, actually, I wasn't, but, but I was, had a little uh, tiff about it. And, I, and they said, well, what are you so upset about? I says, well, here, here's the deal. I want all of my Our Fathers and Hail Marys given back to me. Mm. That I said for eating meat on Friday. And so it sounds like a simple thing. And it sounds like it's something that nobody should be upset about. Mm -hmm. But there are simple guidelines to life. Right. And yet they can be extremely hard to follow. Yes. Extremely hard to follow. So what is it that we say? When is our lives at a level? where we better do something about it or it's not going to end out well. Mm. Well, I think that would be the wake up calls, wouldn't it? Yeah. I mean, right. the whole meat and fish thing on Friday, that was not life altering for sure. I mean, but I don't even. some people it might've been. Well, it, I didn't understand it. Yeah. 
It's that perspective piece we were talking about earlier, mm-hmm. though. What's easy for me may not be easy for you. Mm-hmm. What's easy for you may not be easy for me. Meet on Friday, no big deal. I wasn't brought up Catholic. Had I been brought up Catholic and I was a very staunch, firm Catholic, and it made me feel like a good person, a good Christian, a good Catholic to follow the rules that I had been taught. And then suddenly those rules are changed. Well, what happened to all the goodness I did before? What happened to all your Hail Marys? What value do you place on them now that the expectation has changed? It's supposed to be easier because now you can have meat and fish on Friday. It's supposed to be more modern, whatever the reasons the reasons were. But does that now negate all of the commitment that you made before to the rules that existed before? Hmm. Those simple rules that just made it easy to know what to make on Fridays and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and whatever else there was there. Once that changes that starts opening up the possibility of asking questions about the significance of these rules and expectations that have made things simple for us right now it becomes complicated because we have to think for ourselves and that's actually not the easiest thing to do in many cases especially if we're not taught how to think for ourselves yeah how to ask those discerning questions about what's important to us and how to be able to know what really matters to us, to break it down to its simplest components. But often we don't even question that until we hit that wake up call, that moment where everything in our life changes or enough changes significantly that we have to reanalyze, reestablish what our simple ideas of life are, morals and expectations and objectives Mm -hmm. and all of that. Yeah, I think that let's bring this back to the work that you do around healing, because here's what I was struck by after we talked last time. I don't I I can't say for everybody, but I'm pretty sure that people don't wake up and one day their life is simple and the next day it's chaotic. It's like that frog story, right? Kiss that frog. Is that the one? No, the one where you put the frog in cold water. That one, I, oh, it's just a hard, it's a horrible example. Okay. (laughs) But sometimes we think we're too far gone to get relief to come back. See, that too Mm. far gone to me, Mm -hmm. at least for myself, that's a sign of woundedness in me. When I think I'm too far gone for something, that's how I know when I think I'm too far gone, that's when I know I better get some help. Right. But aren't we really talking about comfort, relief? peace, mm-hmm. right? Isn't yeah. that the healing work that you do? It, it is. And the, the foundation of that is simplicity. I, I truly believe that, that there is a simple, easy, effective, and permanent way to have healing in our lives so that the wounds that we carry no longer define who we are. The events in our lives no longer define who we are. It's a process for sure. It can be a long process. It could take a year, it could take six months. Think about how long it's taken you to get to the place where you find yourself, where you realize you need the help in the first place. All right. So it, it can be miraculous. I've, I've seen miraculous healings. I've participated in them where a moment of clarity, a moment of simply changing your mind about a belief that you have about yourself based on the events that you've experienced in your life changes because you've decided to change it and suddenly literally in that moment the healing has happened it's permanent you are you are healed (laughs) and to the forehead healed it happens because you choose a simpler understanding of the things that have occurred in your life and you've decided that you're no longer going to allow the events in the life in the way you've perceived them to be what takes you through your days. You step into self-will. It is, it can be done with ease. It is not always an easy process. And this Mm. is how I describe it to my clients and my students. I know that we can invite ease into our lives. I know that we can invite simplicity into our lives. I try to do it every day. I invite ease and cooperation into all my interactions every day because I want my day to go smoothly. I want it to be simple. I'm no, I don't get charged up by drama and complexities anymore. I, I find that incredibly draining. And when I see my students getting caught up or my clients getting caught up in that 
that hamster wheel of all the things, all the things they've put in their way of all the reasons why they can't have what they want and they don't deserve peace and tranquility and, and all those other things we've been talking about. I want to show them a simple way to declutter all of that and unpack it and put it aside because they don't need it anymore and learn and understand that they can actually stand with ease even when their life isn't easy. That's the process that I can take somebody through, especially when they've gotten themselves so caught up in that whirlpool of their life experiences and relationships and expectations that they can't function any longer. That disease has showed up in their lives now because of that. Yeah. I can take them through that simple process that I've created to show them, to demonstrate that they can have yearning fulfilled for their life to be simpler and for them to be happier and for them to be fulfilled so they can show up in the world in the way that they came here to show up. The thing that we're experiencing now in the world, Megan, is the degree by which woundedness exists yeah. today. Um, you know, without doing a Gallup poll or figuring it out, you could feel the energy of this uh, in our country. Uh, I, th I, I can't speak for where you are, but I can speak here for, for what's happening within our own boundaries here in the United States. Mm -hmm. And this is not, th this is not relevant to which party you're associated with because wounding, wounding really does not know a wall or a boundary. No. woundedness and i'm really struck by the grieving that's happening now mm -hmm. and the need for healing and what i mean by that is when i say grieving the loss of lives here mm -hmm. it's it's very difficult to even begin to imagine what that's like yeah but there is a call to heal and there is a call to heal at a very deep level, a very wide level, and in some cases at a very simple level. Mm -hmm. But that still doesn't mean it, it might be easy. Well, that's right. And I think that's where it's really important to pull out the difference between ease and, and easy. And both have value. I believe they yeah. both have value. I have no problem taking the yeah. easy route. If I know there's a shortcut, why the hell wouldn't I take the shortcut? <laughs> I mean, what kind of self-flagellation am I putting myself through if I go <laughs> the harder route? I'm not proving anything to anybody if I take the harder route. The easier route is there, but sometimes it can be challenging to see easier route because we have this whole thing about it, easy equals lazy equals not valuable. Right. Right. One of the things I want my students and my clients to be able to do is to take the easy route and feel good about it, feel stronger for having seen the easy solution and taken yeah. the easy solution rather than getting all caught up in the more complex solution. And it's one of the things that you and I were talking about where there still seems to be this idea, both religiously, new age, psychology, that it's the trials and tribulations in life that make us grow and make us better people. We grow through trial. And so that's where I think- Well, isn't it trial by fire? Trial by fire initiation, yeah. all, all of that. And I'm not saying it doesn't have value, but what I would like to invite people to start considering is that when you're in those really tough situations and we've all been there, you're like this, you're in survival mode. It's what's right in front of you and you've just got to get it done. There is no room for personal growth when that's happening. It isn't until you get to the other side of the event that you may have the, the time and the luxury to look back on that event and go, whoo, wow, okay. Now I can see why I had to go through that. But what if you didn't have to go through that in that way and you could have more personal growth and personal understanding of yourself and more strength because you chose ease, yeah. simplicity, and easy? I think you grow more from that, from the second choice, than you actually do from the first choice. I'll tell you, it's a lot to think about, but you know, you are the person to have this conversation and bring it forward. Megan, thank you so much. Let's make sure folks, again, know how they can work with you, how they can learn with you and find out more about, uh, uh, more about you. Thank, thank you for you. today.
Oh, thank you, Pat. They can find me at meganedge.ca. That's my website. I'm on Facebook at Megan Edge Healing. I'm on LinkedIn, Megan Edge Healing. We have a YouTube channel where there's loads of resources and information and workshops that I've done. And that's also Megan Edge Healing. Type in Megan Edge Healing. <laughs> You'll find all the different ways to get in touch with me. I love the old-fashioned email. Send me an email, megan at meganedge.ca. And I will respond as soon as I can. Maybe not in the next two weeks because I'm going back to the cottage to live the simple life again <laughs> before school starts. <laughs> well, I mean, it is shocking. You know, I wear this piece, this necklace I have on now, and I get more compliments on this necklace. It's kind of my table tennis necklace. I wear it all the time. Mm -hmm. And I get more uh, compliments on it. And people ask me, where did you get it from? It's beautiful. And so when I tell them my answer, they're shocked. So the answer is this. I have a friend that's an artist who makes gigantic glass pieces. And one day there was a broken piece on the floor. And I said, what are you going to do with that throwaway? This is what she does now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and she had the nerve to charge me for this. <laughs> <laughs> Megan, thank you for today. I want to thank everybody for tuning in and turning us on, pushing all the right buttons, everybody. And don't don't forget, we've got another hour coming up on Transformation Talk Radio. I can't wait to hear about what we're talking about next month. We'll see you then. See you on episode 21. Yeah. Next time. Keep it simple, everybody. <laughs> Keep it simple. <laughs> You've been listening to Playing on the Edge Radio with Megan Edge. Tune in each month on Transformation Talk Radio and the Dr. Pat Show Network, providing you with ways of sustaining radical and powerful changes in your life. If you've missed any part of this episode,